Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this wonderful evening. On behalf of the Confederation of Mi Indian Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, CMSME, the Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, GCPIT, Global Council for Cluster Excellence and Research, GCCR, SIDBI Regional Office, Bangalore, MSME Development and Facilitation Office, DFO Bangalore, National Stock Exchange, NSE Emerge, Finobit Global, M1 Exchange, an RBA regulated threads platform. Let me welcome you all to this grand celebration of brand 10,000 SMEs 2022 Karnataka edition. It is our tradition to light the ceremonious lamp before every auspicious occasion to invoke the divine grace and blessings. For doing this honors, let me invite the following dignitaries onto the dais. First of all, let me invite today's chief guest, Mr. Praveen I. Ramadurg, Joint Director, Vishisharaya Trade Promotion Center, Government of Karnataka. Let me request Mr. Santosh Ganesh to please accompany the chief guest. Next, let me invite our guest of honor, Mr. Satyagi Rastogi, Regional Head of Small Industries Development Bank of India, Bangalore. Ms. Pushpi Singh, Founder and Managing Director, Finobit Global. Mr. Suresh N. Sagar, Honorable Secretary, Machohalli Small Scale Industries Association. And Dr. Shanti Srinivas, Director, Mount Carmel Center for Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship. Now let's together light the lamp and invoke the blessings of the Almighty. We were supposed to <laughs> lead you to the lamp, sorry. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Confederation of Indian Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, Global Council for the Cluster Excellence and Research, Sidby Regional Office, Bangalore, MSME Development and Facilitation Office, DFO Bangalore, National Stock Exchange, NSE Emerge, Finobit Global, M1 Exchange, and RBA Regulated Threads Platform. Proudly welcome you all to this grand celebration of brand 10,000 SMEs 2022 Karnataka edition. I'm Aparna Ji Kumar, Global Co-Chairperson GCPIT, Director Strategic Initiative CMSME, and your host for today. As many of you already know, CMSME, GCPIT, GCCR, and U First Eduversity are a group of non-profit organizations founded in the recent past. Confederation of Indian Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, or CMSME, is a Section 8 company based out of Bangalore with its district and state council represented across India. We enable business owners to learn from each other, leading to greater business success and an enriched personal life. The Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, GCPIT, is a registered entity in India, South Africa, US, UK, Europe, and UAE, with board and council and a member representation across the world. We started our global journey in 2020 with our first virtual event, the Global Leadership Dialogue. And while the whole world was slowly getting into lockdown, we started connecting with leaders from across the globe. We started organizing premium online events, as many of, may, many of you may still be remembering, with the Global Women's Business Summit. We are so proud and happy that the leaders who came as speakers for that summit in 2020 never left us. We went on to connect with more leaders through our premium events like the Global Women's Business Summit, as I mentioned, Global Tech Summit, Global Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship Summit, Womenomics Global Mission, Global Women in Trade Summit, and Virtual Expo, Entrepreneurship Development Program through which we trained 8,000 plus college students during the lockdown. 
The Global Sustainable Development Summit 2021, we did this every weekend for three months, going through each SDG in detail, focusing on what MSMEs can do for advancing the sustainable development goals. Last year, we also awarded leaders from across the globe who are doing amazing job in sustainability. We also have been celebrating World MSME Day from the year when UN decided to have a special day dedicated to SM MSMEs. As I mentioned, despite the pandemic, the last two years have been very successful for us, and we are quite thrilled about what the year 2022 has brought to us. This year has been one with 100x growth, with new growth opportunities for everyone associated with these organizations. We also organized the Global Founders Council Summit and the Impact Investment Summit this year with 80 plus expert global speakers from uh, across the world and we impacted more than 15,000 people with these events. We at CEMSME and GCPAD believe that modern problems require modern solutions. And all these nonprofits were founded with such a vision when our founder and visionary leader, Mr. Santosh Ganesh, felt the need for all of us to come together and create a platform where all, uh, all of us can collaborate and create a change in the status quo. He founded all these nonprofits with the intention of supporting SMEs, startups, women entrepreneurs, and leaders. We believe, as the UN Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres said in his address at a high level event to mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations in 2020, no country, no community is able to solve the complex problems of our world alone. We need to come together, not only to talk, but to listen. It is absolutely essential that we all join the conversation. It is with this vision we launched the Mission Brand 10,000 SMEs. Mission Brand 10,000 SMEs is a dream mission to assist small businesses by making access to education, collaboration, domestic and national markets, capital, and business support services more readily available to them. The mission will open doors for SMEs to learn from and be mentored by business owners, as well as provide assistance to those who are new to entrepreneurship in the form of one-on-one -on -one advi advising. We realized that the last two and a half years were very tough for MSMEs, and we thought that we need to recognize those MSMEs who has shown resilience and survived this tough time and has emerged as leaders in their fields. It is with this thought that the brand 10,000 SMEs awards were instituted. We hope this recognition encourages the winners and also inspires, inspires others to excel in their respective fields. The last few months were exciting for us, meeting and interacting and going through amazing stories of resilience. We wish to thank all our nominees who took their time from the busy schedules to fill in our nomination forms. We also like to thank our panel of judges who supported us unconditionally in selecting the winners. We received 300, 322 nominations, and we went through every nomination carefully before deciding the winners of these awards. It was a tough job, but we thoroughly enjoyed the process, seeing the quality of the work these amazing leaders are doing. But we believe this is just a beginning. We are on a big mission. We aim to impact 100 million entrepreneurs. We know that impacting 100 million entrepreneurs is not an easy task. This is a huge dream, and it is a huge mission but we believe that it is possible. For achieving this and connecting to incredible impact entrepreneurs globally, we have launched a web portal, globalimpactentrepreneurs.com. We have grown in the last two years only because of the unconditional support of like-minded people like you who wish to give back to the society, and in, we invite you all to be part of CMSME and GCPAT. At this juncture, I would like to thank all our partners and community members who have supported us unconditionally in this event. We would like to thank our gold partners, Sydney Regional Head Office, Bangalore, and Phenobit Global, New Delhi. Our silver partner, M1 Exchange, RBA, an RBA-regulated trades platform. Our government partner, MSME Development and Facilitation Office, Bangalore. Our exchange partner, NSC Emerge. Associations partners, Electronic City Industries Associations, Elshia. Karnataka Corrugated Box Manufacturers Association, KCBMA, Dodda Pura Industries Association, DIA, DIA, Pinia Industries Association, PIA, Rajajinagar Industries Association, RIA, Machahali Industries Association, MIA, Banshia, Bakashia, and we would also like to acknowledge with gratitude the support extended by the entire team of SIDBI, Regional Office Bangalore, New Horizon College, and various individuals who have been supporting us unconditionally for this event. 
We thank you all once again, and we expect that this collaboration will go a long way in supporting our small businesses in the coming years. Now, to talk about our vision 2030, let me invite Mr. Santosh Ganesh, Founder Director, Confederation of Indian Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, and Global Chairperson, Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade. Over to you, Santosh. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, we have started a little late. I will not take too much of time. Uh, way back 2014, when I joined Ministry of uh, Labor as an expert member, uh, as a gazetteer officer into uh, Delhi, I had an opportunity to work with various government organization. And uh, that was the time, 2014, uh, when our Honorable Prime Minister came uh, on power, right? So there were a lot of things started happening. It started happening like MSME uh, uh, fund allotment was started, startup, a uh, lot of 10,000, 15,000 crore, 30,000 crore was getting allotted. I think the SIDBI also got something around uh, good amount of fund for uh, fund, uh, SIDBI startup thing, right? SIDBI fund of fund. And a uh, lot of things started happening. So, and when I was supposed to come out from that assignment in the year of 2017, I thought not, uh, if I am there in the part of this entire government ecosystem, for me it will be easy to do a small research to understand the gap that exists in the ecosystem. I was able to see that there are a lot of, allot uh, lot of fund was being allocated and uh, in reality, I was not able to find out any startup that directly have got benefited. So then I thought that where all this investment, all the money that has been allocated by government of India, how this entire money is getting distributed in terms of building the ecosystem. When it, then we started the research. And uh, the outcome of the research is basically the result of a formation of a confederation of Indian micro, small, and medium enterprises. And last two years, uh, last two and a half years of our lockdown, I think it has given me a blessing. We have not only have started our journey from India, uh, only uh, we have not only limited ourselves in the uh, in the country uh, in the uh, in India, but also we have gone global and we have registered our entity with a mission to build only one global MSME organization by 2030 having presence in 190 countries. That's my mission, that's my vision, nothing else. I am not going to settle down below 190 countries. Today we are just two and a half years old organizations and we have created a footprint of 1,800 members network representing 67 countries. And these 67 countries, we are a registered organizations in India, South Africa, US, UK, Europe, and of course in UAE. So you could understand that we have positioned ourselves strategically to leverage or uh, to gain access to those markets where probably MSME can contribute. Last two and a half years of lockdown, there a lot have changed. But Indian MSME has to change. What are things has been changing? All our MSMEs has got a lot of knowledge, lot of internal capability, but we're still doing the same manufacturing thing. Why are you not starting a service industry? Why are you not starting which is, can be traded virtually or, uh, or remotely by, uh, let's, say, let's say, design services? Lot of manufacturing companies has built lot of design services competency. There are a lot of consulting uh, experience they might have got in terms of when they are manufacturing some component. And, and there are a lot of innovations I could see in the last two and a half years in terms of the future of food. This future of food is being well accepted in Europe, it's being well accepted in UAE, you, because they have got enough money, they are ready to pay if that product is good. The Europe is completely going very aggressive in terms of adopting more sustainable solutions, starting from the sustainable textile, sustainable food and anything. So we are, as a uh, global council for the promotion of international trade and the confederation of Indian micro, small and medium enterprises, are focusing on building a global network where each one of our MSMEs will be having access to any of the countries by 2030. And we are going to be the only one platform by the MSME for the MSME. There are a lot of confederation and a lot of large industries association probably you have seen and they might have not gone so global. We are strongly putting our footprints and we are happy that we have already established 360 industrial association connect all over the world. We have got a lot of success stories that to be demonstrated. You will be able to see that one of the uh, sustainable solutions which been pre, uh, which been put out in the registration desk, which is called sustainable uh, sustainable photonic display system, is one of such system that we would like to promote in the global market. We 
invite each one of the MSMEs who think that they would like to tap the global market in terms of consulting services. If at all, if you think that supplying the raw material may be a challenge, there are a lot of avenues in terms of consulting. If you look into the Europe market, they are talking about one Europe market. We are still not talking about Asia market. I had a meeting with the Niti Aayog team and we have been proposing that why should you not be focusing on building up a glo uh, Asia only e-commerce uh, policy? Why are you not co contributing back in terms of influencing the policy which can encourage the Asia only market? There are a lot to be done. We are uh, putting, we have uh, set up a good strong team in Poland and we are able to see a lot, a lot can happen in terms of textile. We are able to see a lot of food uh, things happening in the, uh, uh, in the UAE market. There are uh, sustainable textiles and all those things is happening. So I think there are a lot of opportunity. And last year, they, uh, exactly the same time we have celebrated Global Sustainable Development Summit, as Aparna has mentioned during our introduction. So see, see we have hosted 167 speakers on a single platform and we have celebrated for 18 days. And that was the world biggest sustainable development summit that ever been celebrated. And that particular sustainable development summit has given us so much of power to think and diversify and emerge as a strong leader and be the global emerging, global sustainable, uh, sustainable businesses platform. So we are not only traditionally focusing on being the, uh, you know, uh, chamber of commerce or uh, being a council or the confederation, we are focusing on being a sustainable businesses platform. We would like to invite each one of the SMEs to talk to us, understand that, that how can you become more sustainable? Because so only we, I could see that uh, we have been interacting with HIA, we have been working with various other industrial associations, I could see that, that there are a lot of efforts have been put in terms of adopting energy management system. There are a lot of efforts have been put, how do you maximize the utilization of water? It's a very good initiative. And I myself is very happy that I got almost good amount of nomination and uh, very uh, and some of the good, nom some of the nominations I think they have been getting award today uh, under the sustainable businesses. So that demonstrate that SMEs in India are not left behind. They are equally competent and they can move, they can compete in the global market. So I would like to conclude here stating that we are on a mission and we are not going to stop till by 2030 and building a team of 100, uh, building a team of 10,000 leaders supporting us from 190 countries by 2030. That's our mission. And we are also in a mission to impact 100 million entrepreneurs worldwide by 2030. These are the two things, that is the commitment that is inspiring us and making us move forward. Thank you so much. It's been always a privilege to address audience like this. It's been told to me that I am going to present few things in front of people who are not only the game changers of Indian SME system, but they are still in the game. Are we all? That's great. Thank you. My name is Pushpi, and I have started Phenorbit Global just after completing my graduate PF, taking out money from a corporate job, starting and seeing the financial literacy difference in the Indian ecosystem. What we have been told about is that in micro, small, medium, and other business enterprise solutions, we have been given various opportunities, not only to deliver product and services in India, but also to be the global trade masters. What we have been doing since so many decades has changed in last two decades. Now the global systems have changed, the trade market policies have changed, and the emergence of various new policies have came in. I would not be talking much related to the policies and the uh, governances which are going on. I will be sharing few of the live examples, and we're talking about three major challenges, specifically that a MSME face during their growth stages. So facing challenge is not the challenge. The challenge is to counter those challenges, and it's a bigger challenge. The challenge that we face during our Energize sessions, wherein we interact with the SME founders and we interact with the growth stage, small businesses who are looking to expand them globally or in multiple cities within India. The basic and the first challenge that we get is we are building something for future. Why not today? 
and this is a very specific question and I uh, belong to Delhi, so I get this liner examples. I'm making something like this, कि बस अगले दस साल में ना दुनिया बदल जाएगी, which is fine. You are building something for ten years later. What about today? There are still problems in the market which are going on. Why are not we catering to solve those problems? So the answer comes. So the uh, discussion always goes two way. So if I come out with a challenge and I give them a solution, they have another challenge for the same. That's the reason I choose only three challenges to discuss today. If we keep on discussing multiple challenges, more new challenges will emerge and the discussion will go on and end. So just to summarize it into the three basic challenges, the first challenge is we build something for future, compromising the today. What is the solution to it? Let's do a market research. Let's build uh, a data. Let's build a database wherein we can get some results out of the current scenarios. Now, this brings me to the second and the important challenge, wherein data exploitation is being considered as a state wherein there are more of the content creators and less the content consumers. So what has happened in a recent state of time, in last four, five years, there have been more and more of the content which is coming up in the market. How to energize that content in the right direction? If we can classify them into three parts, it would come as structured data sets, non-structured data sets, and most dangerous, the semi-structured data sets. So if I today I was building a online application or an e-commerce platform, I can have data access of these three platforms. What about if I'm going to enter into a platform wherein the data structures are not in the proper format? Now we have designed the application, we have executed the application, we have made our financial decisions, our marketing plans, we have built our strategies based on a data who is semi-corrupted. This is the second challenge while discussing with most of the businesses I get to know. The simple solution the simple solution lies to such kind of uh, business models is that we need to work more on the financial data sets. Rather than working on the theoretical aspects of it, we should focus on the numbers. So a 2 plus 2 is equal to 2, 4. But in this similar manner, a 2 multiplied by 2 is also equals to 4. What happens when we change one variable? Once we change that 2 with 3, that 2 plus 2, which was 4, and that 2 multiplied by 2, which was again 4, will change the scenario to 2 multiplied by 3 as 6. However, the addition of 2 and 3 will lead to a 5 only. And such basic one number difference can yield to a difference of thousands and maybe sometimes crores over a span of 10 years. And there is the financial restructuring comes as a picture. Yes, I understand that you all are waiting for the third and the uh, most awaited challenge that everybody think and this sort that some external borrowings are the only solution for all the problems that we have in our organization. So uh, at times I get messages late in the night around 11 p.m. Ma'am, I need three crores of fund for my startup I have a great idea, I need funds to expand my business. 11 p.m. in the night, once they send the SMS, they think by 11 a.m. in the morning they should get the funds, but that's not the market reality is. We need to understand from where the funds are coming in. What is the requirement of fund? And the cycle doesn't end over there and after getting the funds, we have to repay it. What is the repayment schedule attached to it? coming and comprising all the things just into a simple example. What if I ask you, you have to lend X amount today to the person sitting next to you. How you will do that? It's very easy. You'll say, just tell me about his business, about his profile, I'll shake hands and if his business seems profitable to me, I'll fund him. Because we all belong to that uh, arena of SME sector where and we are the recipient and we are the giver as well at the current growth stages. What if I change the question a little bit? What if, if I say the person sitting next to you is already having a loan, he is already having few other liabilities, 
his business volumes are not going great how would you like to fund him the answer will become a challenge don't worry we need not to go into such nitty gritties at this point of time today we are here for a celebration yes for every question there is a solution for every solution there is an another problem this cycle of problem solution solution will keep on continuing and it will keep on going going and on going so let's not uh, discuss the problem part of any question let's discuss the solution part of it having a challenge is easy and mitigating that challenge is what we do thank you thank you ms pushpi singh for the you know encouraging words now it's time to listen to our chief guest today's chief guest mr praveen i ramadurg joint director vishweshwaraya trade promotion center government of karnataka he currently as i said he currently serves as a joint director of the government of karnataka center for export promotion under the aegis of the department of industries and commerce government of karnataka he brings over two decades of enriching experience across industry and government he embarked on his journey in government service in the year 2003 as assistant director at the district industry center and his vast career expanse in his vast career expanse he has conducted an array of investor meet workshops seminars entrepreneurship development and awareness programs and implemented several central and central government state government schemes and policies for the growth of industries in the state of karnataka shri pravin brings brilliant academic credentials with multiple certifications an avid reader shri pravin keeps himself abreast of the contemporary trends and nurtures his passion for reading business related subjects let me proudly invite our honorable chief guest shri pravin i ramadurg <laughs> sorry sir for keeping you waiting <laughs> for his head. dignitaries on the dais key representatives from the confederation of indian micro small and medium enterprises global council for promotion of international trade representatives from various associations organizations members from industry and trade fraternity friends ladies and gentlemen i am extremely delighted to be here today this evening at this brand 10000 sme award event organized by confederation of indian micro small and medium enterprises and global council for the promotion of international trade along with collaboration of various organizations many congratulations to all the award winners and i thank you for inviting me on this significant occasion i feel privileged to be here with you all today on behalf of my organization vishweshwaraya trade promotion center which is a government of karnataka organization mandated for promotion of international trade from karnataka as we see to the global economy uh, the last year it stood at around 100 trillion so major portion was taken out by usa we all know it is it was around 25 trillion then if we see uh, india moved down to the fifth position uh, move going ahead of uk with 3.3 3.5 uh, trillion economy so if you look at the history in our past 30 years we have moved by 10 to 11% in our economy so initially it was around 300 billion and now we are doing 3.5 trillion so what is the next uh, target for india yet the, the next target set is around 5 trillion for the next 5 years that is 20 30 so if we go on and uh, at the rate of 10 to 12% we can achieve a uh, economy of 35 to 40 trillion in next 30 years so if we do more and steady hard or do research and bring in more and more investments definitely there is a chance that we can surpass this 40 trillion and go ahead around 45 trillion also so coming to exports last year we are achieved uh, exports of around 676 uh, 6 uh, billion exports out of which services exports were around 254 billion and Uh, merchandise exports were around 422 billion so the target set was around 400 but we were able to achieve 422 billion exports last year so what about karnataka karnataka has also done very good in exports uh, the previous year we were around 18 billion and we have achieved 26 billion in the uh, previous year in merchandise exports as you all know we are the number one in services exports and the total amount for of exports from karnataka stands at 128 billion which is the number 1 in the country so we are number 
in terms of overall exports and we are number four in uh, merchandise exports. Now, the target set for the state is also increased. So, last year we had set a target of 25 million and now it is, it is moved to 28 billion. So, to achieve this, we are aligning to the initiatives taken by the uh, union government. If you see what are the steps we are going to take to achieve this 5 trillion economy or the, uh, in the next 30 years, how the economy is going to develop and which are the sectors which will influence this economy. It is basically the MSME sector, which has got a lot of opportunities. I see a mine of opportunities for the MSME sector. And if we look into the areas of different verticals, definitely there is a chance that MSMEs will benefit from the initiatives which the central government and the state governments are taking. For example, if you look into the Atmanirbhar Bharat, the Atmanirbhar Bharat, we see that every day it is a news that one or the other product is being manufactured, new product is being manufactured in our country. For example, the Concor has given some container orders for 4,000 containers to BHEL and other uh, industries in our own country to manufacture around 10,000 containers in India itself. As we see, container business and the shipping business lies with the major countries like the Denmark, which is the Merckx, we have already known that, and then the uh, Switzerland and France and China and other countries, but we were not into this sector, but newly we are trying to enter into the container market. Similarly, if you see that in the Atmanirbhar itself, we were able to manufacture so many products, millions of products which, 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 were, which helped the MSME sector. For example, the manufacturing of the national flag itself. And the, in the last uh, two days back, I was reading in the newspaper that uh, there is a huge potential for uh, products from MSMEs. The procurement is being started from HAL, BEL, BM, BML and other areas. Uh, there is an order for BML for manufacturing of uh, railway bogies for metros, metro works. So where there is a potential to these uh, larger industries, definitely there is a chance that MSMEs will also get an opportunity to produce their goods and sell to these large players. And if you think at the sectors, it is from garments, the food processing, the uh, uh, automobile industry, the foundry industry, Everywhere we see a lot of opportunities in Atmanirbhar Bharat. If you move on to the next area in which Government of India is concentrating, uh, this, this is the developing districts as export hub. What our Honorable Prime Minister is seeing is to develop each district as an export hub. When we see on this, we see that uh, there is a lot of potential items which can be manufactured and sold abroad or which can be manufactured and sold, sold domestically. So how do we do that? The Government of India is coming up with a new scheme uh, to develop the infrastructure facilities at the district level with 60% contribution from the central government and 40% from the state government. So any intervention required for infrastructure development, branding, promotion of your product, it is possible under this district as export hub scheme. So coming to the next initiative, which is the ODOP, One District, One Product Program, this is the focused approach to develop a product in each of the districts. So we have already selected some 30 products from each of the districts of the Karnataka state and we are working on these products. So for example, if I see uh, last uh, five years uh, data of the exports of ginger, it was only 2 million. Now it is 45 million exports. So how this 2 to 45 changed in last five years? This, this if you look at the data, uh, it is mainly going from Hassan area and Shumoga area. So all these districts have a potential where products are produced and ex it can be exported. So we need to analyze basically right from the district level, right from the product level, where is the market, how it can be done. So there is an ample opportunity for the MSME sector. Apart from this, the tie-up with e-commerce, we have already signed MOUs with Flipkart and Amazon Global Selling and onboarded a few artisans and MSMEs on uh, the global selling platform, which is a great benefit for the MSMEs to sell their products. Initially, we, as a VTPC, Vishweshwara Trade Promotion Center, facilitating exports and MSMEs from the state of Karnataka, we conducted one uh, uh, meeting with the uh, Embassy of Brazil also, uh, where the participants uh, were onboarded in the sense uh, uh, we brought in the buyers as well as the sellers in a single platform and uh, uh, we made them interact with each other and now business is, is happening. So the ODOP, One District, One Product Program, 
vocal for local. See, if we can see that a lot of products manufacturing in India here can go, uh, can go a big way to other countries. So with this, the MSME, I think, has a huge opportunities. And uh, in the past uh, week, I think uh, 15 days back, uh, there was a launch event of uh, national logistics policy. In Karnataka also, we have a logistics plan already in place. It will be, around, uh, it will be announced very shortly. So the logistics policy, which uh, basically speaks about the last mile and the first mile connectivity, there is huge opportunity for the MSME sector. If you see every day basis, there is a news in the paper that your grocery or your uh, uh, product will be delivered within 10 minutes uh, within the, uh, by the end of the day and all such things. So the technology is playing the key role in, 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 take, in, in, in creating the future of the MSMEs, uh, the, the sectors which, which can be seen which has a broad scope, include the aerospace, the engineering sector, the garment sector, uh, be it anything, India will become self-sufficient in each and every sector across all the verticals. This is what is seen uh, the, as the future of India, even though uh, with the global headwinds, India is going at a pace of 7 to 7.5 percent uh, development is a good sign, and we see that uh, there is a lot of opportunity in other countries, including uh, Europe and UK. In the recently held uh, free trade agreements with uh, Australia and UAE. We have seen that the first uh, trade agreement was in, in 1975, which was with Bangkok. Then in 1998 with uh, Sri Lanka also we have seen agreements, but the free trade agreements of today's address different issues as compared to those ways. Those days where uh, discussions were basically with the trade tariffs and all, but today they are thinking of investments, they are thinking of technology transfer, they are thinking of bringing in uh, IPs and they are thinking of opening up of market to our own products and also to give the market access to other products. So definitely these free trade agreements will help our MSMEs to sell their goods in other markets as well as to uh, procure the goods from other countries and, and value add those products and, and sell it in our own country as well as re-export that. So there is a lot of opportunities as we to see to it and I think uh, uh, with this, uh, I wrap up my thoughts. I sincerely hope that I've been able to share a slice of opportunities, scope and achievements from our state and assure our best uh, support to strengthen the MSME sector in Karnataka. And I urge each one of you to continue with your good work and trust, uh, trust that uh, this event energizes you towards higher objectives of achieving India's vision. My heartiest congratulations to all of you once again, and thank uh, all the organizers for giving me this, organize, this opportunity to be here and speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.